using Super Bowlers in Legends League. Here are a few tips and tricks that hopefully will help you out. Welcome back to the Clash Tips YouTube channel. I have been having so much fun in Legends League and I've been using Super Bowlers pretty much for all of my attacks. This is not going to be an Itsu level guide video, nor a Lexnos level or a Clash with Eric level video. This is just a normal guy who really enjoys Legends League and typically gets two, three, sometimes four, three stars a day. Sometimes in the beginning of Legends League, I'll get, you know, five or six triples, but those are typically on lower level bases. But either way, these are a few things that I have learned while using Super Bowlers and Legends. One thing is that I will do the attacks pretty much the same way every time, even when I mess up, which you're going to see right here. Sometimes I send in that wall breaker, seeing if it can maybe open up that wall a little bit, and I don't notice that the clan castle is sitting right there with Super Minions. Super Minions is the most typical CC that I see whenever I'm using Super Bowlers. Typically, that's for a Queen Charge. We do not do any fancy Queen Charges with our Super Bowler attack. We use just regular smash methods. We make sure that we funnel. But if this happens to you and you pull the CC early, poisoning and freezing that super minion CC, super easy to do. You can just let your warden take the brunt of the attack. You may have to put a rage down, spell down for him, but it's going to happen. You're going to mess up. I remember the first month that I did super bowlers, it was very rare for me to get a triple. Now, I strive for 250 or so trophies a day, which means that I'm going to have to get a couple triples. I'm going to have to get some high 90% two stars. And so hopefully these examples will help you and your quest for getting some triples if that's something that you want to do. The one thing that it will take on your part is time and consistency. I remember watching a Carbon Fin video on how to Lalo, and he made the statement that it can possibly take up to two years for a player to really learn Lalo and be able to do it effectively. And I'd have to say, I 100% agree. With a lot of these attacks, it's going to take months and months of consistency and months and months of time for you to really learn how to get good at it. But honestly, that's the reason why I'm so attracted to a game like Clash of Clans, because it's not something that you can just pick up and do super easily. It's something that takes time. It's something that you have to practice in. And Legends League is a perfect place. It's a perfect sandbox, per se, for you to learn the skills in order to be able to triple effectively with a specific army comp. This first base was probably the easiest of all my triples, which is the reason that I put it in first. Anytime you see an anti-two-star base, Super Bowlers will pretty much tear that up every time. Anytime you see an anti-two-star box base, that's perfectly made for Super Bowlers. So give it a good cheer if that's something that you see whenever you're doing your attacks. But the same thing, I'll put the Flame Flinger down on one side, I'll put the Grand Warden down on the other, and then I'll smash right up the middle with my Super Bowlers, right up the whittle. <laughs> Now, the first thing that I do whenever I have a base come up, because you have 30 seconds to look at that base, is I look for a place that I can put my Flame Flinger down, and the eight defenses that you're looking at are the four Expos and the four Mortars. You do have bases that will put all of the Expos in the four corners, and then we'll put the four Mortars in between the Expos, so literally 100% of the base is covered against the flame flinger in those cases i will use my grand warden first to tank quote unquote for my flame flinger and then i will put my flame flinger beside it and then i will funnel so that the grand warden goes one way and the flame flinger goes another way while the expo for example is targeting my grand warden also something that i will do is i will typically use a valk to distract a valk has enough health she's gotten a decent amount of buff points in the last few months and the last few updates that Supercell has done that it makes it really valuable as far as a distraction troop, especially for a mortar. So if you have an archer tower that's in front of a mortar and you put that flame flinger down and the flame flinger can attack the archer tower, the moment that that archer tower goes down, put that Valk down on top of a barracks or on top of a mine 
or something that that mortar is going to target rather than it targeting the flame flinger, then that is a, a method that I use a lot as well in my Legends League attacks. Now, diamond bases. Diamond bases are, for me, the most difficult to hit with super bowlers because of the pathing. You have that wide channel that's typically opposite the town hall all across the top. So if you send your super bowlers typically as you do in across or counter the town hall, then those super bowlers are just gonna wander and it's very difficult to funnel. So a method that I have used is I will typically put the flame flinger down in an area where I can get a lot of value, a lot of defenses, and then I will send my super bowlers at the town hall and then jump into that back compartment. I'll typically send in the RC in a compartment that is away from the super bowlers. That way the super bowlers can kind of clean up and they can kind of be directed towards the defenses that are gonna give them the most trouble. But just as putting my flame flinger down on one side, putting my grand warden down on the other side, and then sending my super bowlers up the middle is my typical for box bases. This is my typical attack strategy for diamond bases. And again, I, as I said in my diamond base video, how to attack diamond bases, this entry works about 30% of the time for me. It doesn't work a lot of the times because it's difficult to hit diamond bases with super bowlers. And you have to know that diamond bases are one of the weaknesses that you're gonna face with super bowlers as far as bases that you're gonna go up against. Base number three is gonna be your ring base. And just like the box base, I love hitting ring bases with super bowlers because if you can get your super bowlers there in the core, and, and this is an example of me using my Valkyrie for distraction against the mortars I just talked about earlier, but putting your flame flinger down on one side, putting your grand warden down on the other side, and then sending your super bowlers with your heroes up the middle is my typical for something like this. The important thing for a ring base that's not necessarily as important for a box base because with a box base, you have that natural funneling pattern. You have those walls that kind of keep your super bowlers in line. With a ring base, if you do not funnel effectively, meaning if you do not take out those side compartments, then your super bowlers will go around the core, which is not what you want. If your super bowlers go around the core, then it's gonna be a struggle to even get two stars. So with ring bases, take a little extra time for funneling. If you notice up top with my Grand Warden, I'm taking just a tad bit extra time to make sure that Grand Warden can get that cannon down because I don't want my Super Bowlers or my heroes going up north that way. Also, I have to be careful of that RC. That RC or any other hero can pull your heroes, can pull your Super Bowlers off of going into the core and the most important thing with a ring base is getting your super bowlers and your heroes preferably your queen into the core so that way they can gut the core and then you can send your rc in from the side to take down everything else using your freezes using your invisibility spell to protect that rc and then taking everything down another important fact your rage spell is for your healers Yes, you want your heroes and yes, you want your super bowlers to take advantage of that. And as you can see, the RC came in from the side, which is typical with a ring base, but back to rage spells, sorry, ADHD. But <laughs> so use your rage spells effectively. Your rage spells are not only for your super bowlers, but your rage spells are for your healers. Your super bowlers can be super squishy, especially in a core like this, when you have scatter shots, inferno towers, expos, etc all going for them and you want to make sure that those super bowlers stay topped off also using your grand warden tome effectively i try if i can to hold my grand warden tome until the town hall 14 blast goes off so that way they have some protection as they're going through that core as they're going through that poison spell if i notice that my super bowlers are dropping like flies then i might have to hit that warden tome earlier if they're getting stuck coming up to the town hall and they're dying off and they may not get through the town hall i may use that warden tome early but i try to hold it if i can base number four is a base that you don't see a lot of in legends league but the anti two-star diamond base and again the first thing that i look for whenever that base pops up and i have 30 seconds to look at the base is a place to put down my flame flinger then once i find that place i make sure that i test for traps and teslas and giant bombs if i can that's the reason that i bring the two barbs 
I was bringing a giant, but that was essentially three wasted troop space because a giant wasn't doing a lot. You can also bring a hog. Hog can sometimes get in a little bit to possibly trigger a skelly trap, so that way you can kill that those skellies with a wizard, which you can put in behind your flame flinger. Third, you want to make sure that your Grand Warden goes down in a place where you can really funnel so that your Super Bowlers and your heroes are going to go exactly in the path that you really want them to go. I take a little extra time on this attack because this is, again, that Diamond-style base where your Super Bowlers, if they go north, if they go towards 12 o'clock, then they're not going to go towards the middle of the Town Hall, and they're not going to get all that value that you really want. The key with Super Bowlers is creating pathing so that they go in the direction, they go down a very specific path. I typically bring two super wall breakers, one to break the initial wall, one if I can to break an interior wall, but I also have to be very careful with super wall breakers, I about said super bowlers, I have to be very careful with my super wall breaker because if I use that second wall breaker and they break a wall that I don't want them to break, then my super bowlers will path in a direction that I do not want them to path. And again, the entire goal with Super Bowlers is to keep them all together going in the same direction. Of course, by the end of the attack, they're gonna start to spread out, that's understandable, but then that's when you bring in the RC in order to clean up and then help them to stay healthy in order to help them to stay alive at least as long as possible. Now, whenever I'm releasing my RC, one of the things that I really have to be careful of and one of the mistakes that I make quite often is I release the RC on the side of the Barb King. If you do that, rip your RC, rip. If I don't triple, a lot of the reason is because I release my RC on the side of the Barb King. Also, some of you may be wondering why I bring a skeleton spell. The reason that I bring a skelly spell is because sometimes, I would say maybe once a day, so once out of every eight attacks, I will be able to trigger the town hall so that my flame flinger can not only funnel but can also go for the town hall at the same time. I could just bring an earthquake, but because I use it so seldomly, that skelly spell comes in super handy for single target inferno towers, for distracting expos, etc. Now with this, I want you to look at the flame flinger. Again, this is your typical box based setup but I take down that archer tower and notice I place it on the side so that that mortar will be targeted next. The moment that that archer tower goes down, I put that Valkyrie down so that way that mortar is distracted so that my flame flinger can take down the mortar before it takes too much damage. If that flame flinger takes one hit, totally okay. That's not that much damage. And in this case, my flame flinger did get hit once by the mortar, but two hits can really limit the life and limit the effectiveness of your flame flinger so you want to try to avoid that as much as possible another point with super bowlers it can be super easy to get a one star and so this side entry is something that i do quite often especially with box bases because i can again path my super bowlers down a direction that i know that they're going to go and they're going to be able to target the town hall as they pass by now, one of the things that you do want to try to avoid, especially with your Super Bowlers, is try not to path them through the Town Hall. And this is an example of me hitting my Warden Tome early. I noticed that my Super Bowlers were starting to go down. There was a ton of damage that was targeting them right there, but they were able to pass by the Town Hall and they were able to take it down as a result. Sometimes, especially in Legends League, it's best not to come at the Town Hall from the opposite side because there are things that can happen and your Super Bowlers can start to stray. And as a result, you don't get the Town Hall down. I don't know how many times I've gotten high 90% one stars because I brought my Super Bowlers in from the opposite direction. And again, in Legends League, a two star, 50% two star is going to beat a 99% one star every single time. And so the goal is to get that two star, at least two stars in Legends League. Hopefully this video was helpful. Again, I'm not Itsu, Lex Nose, Carbon Fin level, but these are some ideas that a regular Clasher can give. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment. Thanks so much for watching.